All right, today I'm going to talk to you about this group called One by One to Jamaica. It's been around for 20 years, and it's, uh, it's a Christ Christian group down in Jamaica. And originally it went down there for hurricane relief because this town of Harmons got swamped by a hurricane, completely wiped out. And this guy named Henry Schaefer went down there and he was like, wow, this, this place is a dump and it needs help. So he established One by One, and he's been going down there for 20 years now, and they've been doing an unbelievable job. Um, 80% of the town we uh, travel to is unemployed, so they, they literally cannot help themselves. So when you get the group together to go to Jamaica, you each have to raise uh, $1,200 individually. And you do that through fundraisers. Uh, if you contact your church, they give you a lot of money. And so once we, we fly into Montego Bay, and once we're there, we uh, take a three-hour bus ride in the mountains on a shaky bus, up hills, down hills, and it's, it's a hell of a ride. And so once we get to Harmon's, Oh well, screw it. Um, okay, whatever. So once we get to Harmons, we, uh, we walk around the town, we meet the people there, we meet the house, we see the house, and we have each person brings down uh, two suitcases full of clothes, uh, school supplies, shoes, toys, everything. So f we bring, you have to bring in like, cans of food too. We unload it all into this big room, about like four times the size of this, and then all the girls have to unpack it, which sucks for them. And we have to sit around all the guys with trash bags and hold up trash bags, and we sort it all out. That, those clothes are then moved to the store in the house, which I'll talk to you a little bit more next. And so that's, that's day one. And then day two, we take a walking tour. We see the houses that the people live in now. We see um, the views of the mountains that, uh, that are at St. Harmon's. And we uh, meet people that live there. And they're just so happy to see us there because they're like, these are the people that are going to be working on for us for the next seven days. And they're, they're very loving people, and they just do whatever they can to make us feel welcome in their town. And so then um, the work that we did there is, like I said, the store is where all those things are brought to. And that's mainly work for girls. And they, what happens is people in the town get two uh, grocery bags, two trash bags for 25 cents a piece, and they can fill it up as much as they can. And they have to apply to get these trash bags. And after they apply, it's usually about a three-month wait. And those two trash bags will last them. They won't get back in there for like another two years. So then they, they really do need to shop wisely. And that's, it's unbelievable that they can live off of two trash bags of clothes for two years. And then another job that we did was um, hauling mall, which is crushed, crushed rock. And it's shoveled into feed bags at the bottom of a hill. Because where we are, it's like really mountainous. So most of the houses are, that we build are on top of hills. And so it's shoveled into these feed bags. And it's then brought, it's just passed up an assembly line up to the top of the hill. And this, this job is a lot of fun. It's like, it's really boring and tedious, but whatever. Because um, there's Jamaicans running around all day. And you get to like hang out with the Jamaican kids. And like, they're like, oh, you want a mango? I'm like, yeah, sure. Climb up trees, grab mangoes, toss them down, just running around. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And then uh, the pit. This is the best job you could possibly do. It's you, another American, and two Jamaicans digging an eight-foot hole, and you just hang out all day long because the two Jamaicans I worked with, they, they were really hard workers, and so they got their work done fast. And so um, they, their names were Ricky and Ruggs. And uh, <coughs> what they do is they go in there with picks, and they crush the rock. And then me and uh, my friend Tyler Eichwald, we went in there, and we scooped the rock out. And it's got to be an eight-foot hole and they put an uh, outhouse over it because usually they'll just, um, they'll just dispose of their waste like just on top of the soil that's already there and it's not very healthy at all. <coughs> the uh, fourth thing that we did was the house. We, we built, what we do is we lay down two foundations for the next group to f uh, finish a house on top of and we finished two houses that foundations had previously been done for us. In the house, it's a 12 by 12 foot house, which is not big at all for a family of like sometimes five to live in. And it's, the walls are made of styrofoam with uh, just wire over it. And we'd get cement mixer, water, and mix them together and just go over it. And it's not, it's, it's sturdy. It's, it's hurricane tested. That's been, because they get, that's the town gets hit by hurricanes a lot. 
but and then the roof is just uh, a copper roof and um, what there's like 25 people working on each house and it takes it only takes seven days or five days and um, it's the Jamaicans also work with that and you I don't have my picture to show you but when we finish the houses the people that get these houses they're they can't stop smiling because um, the houses they come from are literally two pieces of wood on a tree with another piece of wood on top of it and it's just to protect them from the rain and they that's their that's their home and so the way they get their house is they apply for uh, they have to fill out an application it has to show like how long they've been a member of the community because if other people in the around in the surrounding communities hear about this they're obviously like well I'm gonna go to Harmons because I'm gonna get a free house and no you have to be there for a substantial amount of time you have to like prove that you're trying to like help the community in other ways and it, it takes a long time for them to um, actually get accepted and then for their house to be built and one by one builds 50 houses a year for these people and so that's and it's the numbers are growing as more groups try to get down there and then another thing we did was we it's the, there's this place called the infirmary and um, it's about an hour down the road and it's just this place where all these uh, it's like a retirement center for extremely sick people and we just go down there and hang out all day and I met this guy Bennett he's an 80 year old priest and him and I just talked about Bible passages I told him what lacrosse was he told me how like he told me all about his family we talked for three hours and then it's all these people are just like they treat you like your grandchildren or, yeah like you're their grandchildren because they just like love the interaction they get because if not, they just, there's like stray cats running around, so they just like play with cats all day. But they love to hang out with people who are like young and youthful and things like that. And then on the last day, we pack up the house. Well, at 4 a.m., the, peop the people that work there, called summer staff, come banging on your door, screaming and hollering. It's not really what you want to hear at 4 a.m. But and then we pack up and we head to Ocho Rios which is a resort town on the north side of Jamaica, on the North Shore. And what we did there is just like uh, ran around town all day. We went to Duns River Falls. I don't know if any of you have heard of that. It's this huge waterfall you just climb up. And um, we just said our goodbyes. We walked around town. Typical Jamaican city, getting offered typical Jamaican things for a lot of the time. And um, we just had fun, shared stories. And we had a three-hour meeting at the end where we each went around and shared a story from the week. And um, one of my friends, his story was that he met a woman in the town with cancer. And there was a huge like collection of money for her with her cancer. And he was a 17-year-old survivor of cancer. And so he just, and so his story was the most inspiring out of anybody's because how he had that connection with her. And so um, we left Dunsbury Falls, flew back into Miami. All of our parents were waiting there, happy to see us. And uh, I, met a, I met a guy down there named Damien, and he has to go, he comes to America every six months because he has a heart condition where like, he just like passes out. Which, and so he has to come to Pennsylvania every six months. And I still talk to him uh, every two weeks. And I mean, it's hard to understand him in person, so over the phone, it's somewhat impossible to understand what he's saying. But I mean, the relationships you build down there are amazing and the time's amazing. So only 30% of college students volunteer in one way or another. So that's like that chunk of the room. And so my idea is that everyone in this room joins me and we get a group together and we go down to Harmons and so we can all experience this uh, trip and make a difference in all these people's lives. If you guys want to go.